the difference between an all-wheel drive four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, and rear-wheel drive. Let's start with two-wheel drives. These describe vehicles in which, in theory, two wheels receive power from the engine at the same time. Usually, the two wheels are on the same axle in the drivetrain. Most vehicles with two-wheel drive are mainly used on roads and highways. Two-wheel drive vehicles are either front or rear-wheel drive. This means either the front or the rear axle is the drive axle that moves the vehicle forward. When the vehicle begins to accelerate, some of the weight of the vehicle is shifted to the rear, giving a rear-wheel car better balance and traction. Two-wheel drive systems are simple and ragged. This is why rear-wheel drive is so popular in police cars and other service vehicles. Traditionally, two-wheel drive systems have a differential in the rear axle. This is used for turning the vehicle. If both drive wheels rotated at exactly the same rate, the vehicle will have difficulty going around the corner. In a turn, the outside wheel has to go faster to keep up with the inside wheel, which turns slower. A differential allows one wheel to turn faster under these conditions. This means only one of the two wheels actually has power at any given time. A differential also prevents excessive tire wear. Of the two drive types, rear wheel drive has more disadvantages. In wet or slippery conditions, having effectively only one drive wheel, the tires are going to slip and lose traction. A front wheel drive not to be confused with a four-wheel drive, will have better traction, but in snow and icy conditions will not equal a four-wheel drive car or truck. Front-wheel drive means that the vehicle's engine power is delivered to your vehicle's front wheels. With front-wheel drive, the front wheels are pulling the car and the rear wheels do not receive any power on their own. The pros of a front-wheel drive car vehicle are that they typically get better fuel economy and emit less carbon dioxide. Since the weight of the engine is located over the driving wheels, a front-wheel drive vehicle can maintain better traction in snow. However, performance enthusiasts have claimed that front-wheel drive vehicles are less fun to drive. Rear-wheel drive means that the power from the engine is delivered to the rear wheels and the rear wheels push the car forward. The front wheels do not receive any power and are free to maneuver the vehicle. Due to the weight of a rear-wheel drive vehicle being more evenly spread than a front-wheel drive vehicle, this creates a better balance of weight. This is why most sports cars such as the Corvette and Camaro are rear-wheel drive and are more exciting to drive. The disadvantage of rear-wheel drive vehicles is that they do not perform well in poor weather conditions conditions such as rain or snow because they are more prone to loss of traction on slick roads. A 4x4 or a four-wheel drive vehicle means the power from the engine is delivered to all four wheels all of the time. 4x4 is engaged and has an option to operate in a rear-wheel drive format to conserve fuel. The biggest advantage of a four-wheel drive vehicle is that the, it provides versatility and power to take it on any terrain or weather condition. The con of a four-wheel drive vehicle is that it operates in a rear-wheel drive format most of the time and has less traction than an all-wheel drive vehicle. An all-wheel drive vehicle, a drive chain that employs a front, rear, and central differential to provide power to all four wheels of a vehicle. As the name implies, all wheel drive systems power both the front and rear wheels all the time. But in practice, there are two types of drive trains that are called all wheel drive. One does, in fact, drive all the wheels continuously and some manufacturers refer to this as full-time all wheel drive. The second, often called part-time all wheel drive or automatic all wheel drive, operates most of the time in two wheel drive mode with power delivered to all four corners only when additional traction control is needed. When it comes to fuel efficiency, engines generate rotational energy. The farther the engine must travel and the more times it must change direction before it turns the wheels, the less efficient the system is. So the most efficient drivetrain theoretically is the transverse perpendicular to the direction of the travel engine located right next to the angle exit its power. That means the front engine four-wheel drive or rear wheel engine rear wheel drive setup is most efficient. Shafts connecting the engine to an axle at the opposite end of the car add inefficient mass and rotational inertia and the bevel or worm type gears required to redirect the, that rotational energy 90 degrees introduce further inefficiencies. All-wheel drive can never be as efficient as four-wheel drive or rear wheel drive with a traditional internal combustion engine. All-wheel drive systems that incorporate an electric motor at either axle like in the electric Tesla Model Y or plug-in hybrid ta Toyota RAV4 Prime are notable exceptions. Here again, when it comes to space efficient, a transverse engine snuggled right up against the driven axle is most space efficient. So I like proved this point with the original front engine or the front wheel drive mini. And cars like today's Smart 42 and Renault Tri Tringo offer the counterpoint for a rear engine rear wheel drive layout. With no shafts, transmission or other bits intruding on the cabin, the floors of such vehicles can be flat and most of the vehicle's length can be devoted to carrying people and stuff. When it comes to the best traction, a vehicle's potential accelerator traction can be computed by multiplying the total coefficient of friction between the driven tires and the road surface by the instantaneous mass pressing down on these driven tires. Obviously, the only way to make 100% of the vehicle's weight work for it 
for this equation is to drive all four wheels. So all wheel drive holds an inherent advantage in accelerative traction. Note that braking it mostly just adds unhelpful mass and inertia. Something to keep in mind when you see a four wheel drive or an all wheel drive vehicles in the ditch after a snowstorm. Cantilevering the engine of the front wheel drive axle or the back of a rear wheel drive axle is like putting a big kid on a teeter totter. It adds weight to the driven axle and subtracts it from the undriven one. This is good for traction when setting off in a straight line. It's less good for the dynamic handling where that weight imbalance can lead to an under or over steering when turning. When turning aggressively in low traction situations. We should also remember that most of the vehicle's weight is positioned higher than the axles. So when we accelerate forward, the center of mass shifts backwards, momentarily adding to the load on the rear axle. For this reason, locating the engine near or the, at the back of the vehicle further improves the traction control available to a rear wheel drive vehicle. Because a proper winter tire can, can more than double the coefficient of cold weather friction relative to a standard all season tire, a front wheel drive or mid or rear engine rear wheel drive vehicle with winter tires might easily accelerate an all wheel drive vehicle on all all season tires snow or on a slick surface naturally combining all wheel drive and winter tires is the ultimate traction solution but remember that when braking or turning all wheel drive hardware mostly just adds mass so that the ultimate winter safety of a front wheel drive vehicle on winter tires could easily eclipse that of an all wheel drive vehicle when it comes to safety frankly the driven axles have little to do with passive safety although in slippery conditions braking traction under power with front wheel drive tends to lead to understeer while braking traction with rear wheel drive can cause oversteer. Of these options, understeer is generally considered safer or at least more benign given how you'd slide forward in the direction of travel, not sideways or possibly backwards as oversteer. An all-wheel drive system could break the traction at either axle depending on its design. Locating the engine up in the crumple zone ahead of passengers can offer some added protection but savvy engineering and material science make modern mid and rear engine cars just as crashworthy as front engine ones. As for enhancing the driver's ability to actively avoid an accident by driving out a dangerous situation and neutral weight balance and a low polar moment of inertia are important. So an argument could be made that a mid-engine rear-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive vehicle pencils out as the safest. When we talk about handling, we can recommend wonderful driving cars with each of the above drive tanks. But the engineering and driving fun decks are stacked against front-wheel drive. Blame the friction circle because every tire only has so much friction force to approach it. Coefficient of friction times mass. Every bit of longitudinal acceleration force it generates comes at the expense of force that can be applied laterally for turning. This means that the power of a turn is far less satisfying in a front wheel drive. The same decks are therefore inherently stacked in favor of front rear wheel drives and all wheel drive vehicles that bias more torque to the rear. Of course, as total engine power and torque rises to a point that threatens to overwhelm the two tires, all wheel drive vehicles are necessary to safety or more cleanly put power down when exiting turns. When it comes to acceleration, as noted, only all wheel drive vehicles can take full advantage of every ounce of onboard mass and generating accelerative friction. But remember that mass, friction, and rotational inertia are all inherent enemies of acceleration, and all wheel drive systems add a lot of each. So, just as in the winter traction example above, it's highly likely that at least four vehicles with less than 400 to 500 horsepower fitting a set of drag slicks or dry traction optimized summer tires to a rear wheel vehicle might allow it to easily drag a similar all wheel drive vehicle on all season tires. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, share the video, and hit on a notification bell. Until the next time, peace.